Good golly, is the entire cryptocurrency market cap on the verge of a major breakthrough? We'll talk about specific price targets to watch for in the entire cryptocurrency space and specifically how they relate to Bitcoin's price exactly and what Bitcoin price this correlates to as massive support. And wow, the biggest single reason you are not going to want to miss of why we believe Bitcoin is going to reach tens of trillions of dollars of market cap in the future. Guys, this is huge. And there's also some interesting data here of why Ripple being successful could actually leave XRP in the dust. This is huge. And while Tesla's market cap actually is eclipsing Bitcoin, what does that mean for Bitcoin's total valuation? We got a lot of juice to get chugging. And wow, we're gonna be taking a look at three different altcoins two that have had extremely nice price movement against Bitcoin in the past few months. However, there's one that we're looking at to see if there's a similar correlation. And in fact, we could be ready to see a similar move for this cryptocurrency. Wow, strap in and strap on. Let's do this. Wow, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another late night edition, Bitcoin and altcoin and many, many news in the crypto sphere at Webisode on this July 4th in America. Happy celebrations to everybody who celebrates guys. Hope you're eating well. We have a lot to get into in this video, and we're going to be talking about some stuff we don't usually talk about, specifically these three altcoins, and then some insanely, insanely crucial information that if you are invested in Bitcoin, if you're looking at least another year or two or even 10 years into the future, you are going to want to see this data, guys. It's absolutely mind-blowing, mind-melting. Basically, why Bitcoin is so binary and why the future price of Bitcoin is extremely binary. And we'll get into details about what that means. Wow, so much to get into, guys. And as well, don't forget, still, limited time. If you vote on this Ledger website, you get 20% off a Ledger X. Basically, all you have to do to vote is scroll down here. Okay, you pick whichever coin you're voting for. You copy right here the coin you're voting for paste that into the discount at the end, you'll see the discount pop up. And when you purchase that Ledger X, you get 20% off and you vote for that cryptocurrency. Huge guys, limited time. This is one of the biggest sales for Ledger X in history. So make sure to take advantage. And as well, if you're new to the channel, make sure to drop that comment, like, subscribe, turn on the dings to enter for this Ledger giveaway. And without any further ado, let's get into the website. Wow, what's going on everyone? So we have a lot to delve into. Let's start off with the Bitcoin price as you guys like to see. Everyone likes to see the Bitcoin price here. Not too much, and that's why we have so many other things to delve into in this webisode, but specifically, guys, still trading within this channel. Now, this looks like this would have to you know, go a significant amount to get to the top of this channel or to the bottom, but uh, Bitcoin would literally only have to go $200 to get to the top here, and for the bottom here, we'd have to go about $350. So while this channel looks uh, like, you know, this would be a pretty significant move, it's really not. It's just that it looks significant because we've been moving barely at all. That $200 looks like a pretty significant move, guys, because Bitcoin's price has not been doing anything. Okay, I had a tweet earlier today. Yesterday's Bitcoin candle high was roughly 91.30 and the low was about 90.30. Bitcoin within 24 hours stayed in the same $100 range, okay? This is absolutely huge. It barely moved. The volatility is so incredibly small. You can see yesterday's candle right here, okay? You can see how small this is. Now, if we zoom out, guys, you can see basically we haven't seen a candle that small in months, okay? Probably the last time we saw anything remotely that small, okay? It was probably actually back here on April 28th. And coincidentally, what happened after this very small candle? Yeah, you guessed it, uh, a move from 77 all the way up to 9,400. So almost $2,000 move in a single daily candle. So guys, that's another example of volume uh, absolutely coming in clutch after some very, very decreased volume and increased volatility after a long, long period of declining volatility, okay? So basically, if you look on this chart, you can pause it right here and you can see no candle is as small as this one, except if we go all the way back to April 28th. So that's absolutely massive. You should pay attention to Remember guys, when things you know get so sideways that it looks like Bitcoin is just going to trade at that level forever, that is very often what happens before a massive move. Uh, and so we can actually switch to some of these other charts, still trading between this you know, 8,800, 9,200 range, not much to look at there. Same thing here, we are still just like trading sideways absolutely for the past week. Uh, and same thing on these weekly charts, guys, not much else to report. The main thing I wanna cover here with Bitcoin is just that. 
the decreased volatility is going to end soon. We're going to see a rapid rise in volatility, very similar to like what we saw before, I have no doubt. Not saying it'll happen tomorrow, but I definitely think it's coming up. Now, actually, we're going to be covering some of these altcoins as well, but I actually want to cover the entire cryptocurrency market cap. Now, this is huge. So this is every single cryptocurrency you know and love, uh, even counting, you know, that almost $800 billion valuation at the very tail end of 2017, very beginning of, 20, of 2018, okay? One thing I really want to point out here is that uh, the entire crypto market cap, besides the fact we had that catastrophe on March, you know, the beginning of March, and we went, you know, Bitcoin got slashed in half, lost 50% in just days. Aside from that, we were holding very well above the 100 and 200 day moving averages. And we've been as well after this slow recovery uh, ever since the beginning of March, slowly recovering ever since about April 25th, we've been back above these moving averages, okay? So overall looking bullish, we've been above these forever. Now, what exactly does this level correlate? It's about roughly $237 billion market cap for all of crypto. That correlates roughly to right about that $8,600 level, which you can show you on this chart. Actually, it's the very bottom of this channel. So basically on the entire cryptocurrency market cap, it's showing very likely that we're gonna find support in a bottom if we come down here to right about 237 billion, which is also exactly the bottom of this channel, right around the $8,600 level, 8,600 as well. And as well, 8,600 is right in this region above the 200 day moving average right here and this absolutely critical zone that we've been finding support on for weeks and weeks. So out of all of cryptocurrency, that's what we're watching for, okay? Everything's looking healthy so far. You can see as soon as we plummeted below both the 100 and 200 day moving average on this date, we went from a market cap of 230 billion USD to 110 billion USD. Over 50% of the entire cryptocurrency market cap got wiped out in just a few days. So again, this is just obviously very clear to hold. We've already had multiple tests of support here, okay, back uh, at the beginning of May or the end of April, and as well, actually about a, you know, a week or two into May as well, we came back down here and immediately found support. And on Bitcoin's daily chart, this is what it looks like right here, which is actually also exactly where the 200 day moving average is for Bitcoin in general. So this was the pullback here where we found support. And if we correlate to that chart, this is exactly where that is as well. Okay, huge. So we're going to be getting into some altcoins, but I actually want to cover some of this data as well. Okay, guys, so Ripple's success could leave XRP in the dust, according to Bitcoin bull Anthony Pompliano. So this was published on Daily Huddle. Uh, this is huge. So one of the main things I want to cover here before we get into the Ripple news is this. You, me, and everybody else is underestimating how big Bitcoin can actually get. So Murad Mahmudov made an argument that Bitcoin's market cap is not comparable just to the global monetary supply at 90 trillion. He thought it was a 150 trillion dollar comparison and how he got there was a lot of assets that you and I own. We own because we don't want to hold cash because of inflation. Now, this is a good analogy right here. Just like Uber was a market expanding piece of technology, it wasn't just fighting taxis. Okay. Uber wasn't made just to replace taxis. It ended up also actually capturing a market of people who don't own cars. Or, for example, people that maybe go out on the weekends and party a little too hard and don't want to drive their car because they're a little too intoxicated or messed up. So replacing taxis, you know, helping out people without cars, and also uh, filling in for the people who are a little too intoxicated on weekends. All of those situations Uber ended up capturing. Same thing with Bitcoin he's saying here is that Bitcoin can capture so many different markets aside from just the ones a lot of people expect. Maybe I don't put my wealth in store of value assets. I can put that in currency because it's a deflationary type currency. Okay, huge. So let's actually talk about this Ripple news right here real quick. So Morgan Creek Digital co-founder and Bitcoin bull Anthony Pompliano says he believes uh, Ripple's success won't necessarily boost the value of XRP. Okay. Now, a lot of you guys might, might not like to hear that for all you people very bullish on XRP, but let's get into a little detail here. I think XRP as part of the Ripple product, meaning they use it inside the product, I understand why they do that, and he sees the advantages of the Ripple ecosystem, but what Anthony does not understand, he says, is I think where I choose not to engage on this side is I don't understand why people are buying it and speculating on the future price. To me, if Ripple is successful, it doesn't mean that XRP has to be successful. And unfortunately, I agree with this. I actually do obviously have XRP. I've said this numerous times over the past year, two years. Uh, I actually invested in XRP back in 2017. I haven't invested in it again probably in a year or two. So I haven't bought any more XRP in probably like a year or so, but I still have my initial stash from back in 2017. If you separate XRP and Ripple, Ripple as a software company wants to build better software for banks. It's a no brainer, it makes sense. It's a good venture capital bet. He's jealous that he didn't invest. However, uh, he's basically just saying, even though Ripple as a product seems pretty good, that doesn't necessarily mean that XRP 
has to do well if, if Ripple does well. And then as well, Tesla market cap eclipses Bitcoin, okay? So Tesla actually has a market cap now of over 220 billion, while Bitcoin only has 170 billion. Uh, Bitcoin's all-time high market cap though was 334 billion. That's when Bitcoin was right around that $20,000 mark. So currently at its current price around 9,000, uh, a little over 9,000, it's about 160, 170 billion. In fact, Tesla is not the only company ahead of Bitcoin. Uh, actually, Microsoft, Apple, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, and Berkshire Hathaway all actually have sizes bigger than Bitcoin. So basically, my point of saying that is that Bitcoin is still extremely small. The fact that a currency that can be used around the world is still smaller than some of these companies. Okay, a company is fundamentally different from a currency. Realistically, a currency could have a much, much, much higher valuation than a company could ever really imagine or ever capture in a market, right? So there's a lot of upside for Bitcoin there. Wow, guys, so we're gonna be talking about these altcoins, but as well, if you're interested in getting these altcoins, check out the crypto.com app. If you use the link in the description, you and I both get 50 free dollars of MCO when you stake the MCO and you sign up there. Absolutely huge. I definitely recommend the app, guys. It's been awesome. You guys have been loving it. So without any further ado, actually, let's jump into these. So the first two that I want to cover are coins that have already pumped here. So VeChain, obviously, coming up at a very big level of resistance right around these levels we have on the chart here. So guys, this is actually VeChain trading against Bitcoin. So this isn't so this isn't VeChain USD pairing. This is the VeChain Bitcoin pairing. So VeChain is obviously doing a little bit better over the past few weeks and months uh, in the pairing than it was previously. Again, I think this is absolutely amazing when they do well during these like bearish trends when we're really not in a bull market. Uh, I would even argue maybe we're not in a bear market anymore right now. It's a very, very, very neutral period. Uh, okay, before a lot of people think we're right before the bull market. So with that being said, you guys can see all the all the Satoshis there on the side if you want to actually zoom in and see that. Same thing for Cardano here. Uh, some of you guys asked me to cover this actually, so I just wanted to throw this in as well. But Cardano has had some nice pumpage. But again, guys, you can see in its Bitcoin pairing, it is still over 90% down, okay? It's still, still very much deflated. And I definitely think there's upside for both of these. But the main point of what I wanted to do here, okay, so the first was VeChain, then Cardano. Now Nano is another one I'm looking at because Nano has not actually come up to a significant area uh, of its of its Bitcoin pairing, similar to VeChain and Cardano, and I think Nano might actually be a good, a, definitely a good coin to get into before this bull cycle. Okay, not financial advice, but I'm just giving you guys because you guys ask all the time. This is definitely one I'm looking for, and it's one that really hasn't pumped too much. Okay, um, it's really easy to get on and say something like VeChain and Cardano because they've already pumped. But that's why I wanted to throw in those as examples and then talk about this one in particular. And as well, guys, if you want me to, I could actually continue to just throw in maybe like an altcoin that nobody's really covering at the end of a video every once in a while, uh, just that I'm interested in, just to spice things up a little bit, especially as Bitcoin is really not doing too much. If you haven't already and you want to get 20% off a Ledger Nano X, not the S, the newest version, the X, if you want 20% off the newest version, then uh, remember, all you have to do is uh, click whichever one of these promos you want. You can see who's actually winning. Um, obviously Bitcoin has 2,600 points right now. Then we have Ethereum with like 890 and you can see all the rankings for these other ones. But all you have to do is hit copy. Okay. You go right here, copy whichever promo code you want. And then when you go to vote or to buy the Nano X, you just put in the discount code, you paste it in there. It'll give you your 20% discount. And when you actually buy it, it'll submit that as your vote for whichever one you copied to vote for. Huge guys. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.